Good morning. Good morning. I got just a few announcements before we get going here. No, I ain't going to say that. I got some announcements. Um, August 6th, VBS volunteer training and decorating. That's today. Uh, we'll meet here in the sanctuary at 3 o'clock. Um, so we're going to, every volunteer should plan to, to attend this. We'll meet. We're going to do some brief training that you'll find very helpful come BBS time, we're going to decorate this place. We're going to turn it into twists and turns um, all over the building. And then we're going to eat. And it's a taco bar, and I've been smelling it cooking, and boy, I'm excited about it. Uh, so make sure you be here if you're a volunteer, if you volunteer to serve um, BBS. Okay, that's today, 3 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Uh, August 7th, women's group meeting at 630 in the fellowship hall, food and fellowship. Uh, all ladies are welcome to attend. Monday, August 7th through Friday, August 18th is the Blue Ridge Camp meeting, 7 p.m. nightly. Um, Wednesday, August the 9th, evening service will be a prayer walk for VBS. And, you know, a lot of things we do for VBS, we've been planning for almost a year. Um, and all the things we do to prepare for VBS and all the things we do to make sure VBS goes off like it's supposed to, nothing can be more important than praying over VBS. Uh, so we're going to do that here. We're going to walk from the different stations where these children will be hearing the gospel. And we're going to pray over each one of those stations. And we're going to pray that the Holy Ghost meets up with us um, and changes hearts and lives. Not just the kids that are here, but for us at Volunteer too, we all need them. Uh, so please come Wednesday night uh, and we're going to pray uh, over Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School is here August 10th through 11th. That's this week. Uh, those days, we'll meet at 6 o'clock. 
of EBS will be over about 8.20. Uh, and August 12th is Saturday. We'll be here from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's the marathon day. Um, so please come, um, you know, keep that in mind. Get your children here. If you haven't registered already, you can do that up front. There's one of them QR codes that would help you do that. Uh, so get registered and, and plan to be here. All right, so the offering for, v, for VBS this year will go to the Hope Chest. Uh, that's a local organization here in Columbus, and they help families and children with stuff they need. I just saw a, uh, they do like a, a, a shoe giveaway sometimes of the year, um, you know, shoes for kids that may not have them, uh, back-to-school stuff, backpacks and that kind of thing. Uh, so uh, even furniture, I saw some posts on their web, on their Facebook where they were giving furniture uh, to people that didn't have it. So they provide all kinds of things for people right here in Polk County, and that's why we picked it. Um, they do a wonderful work right here in Polk County, and so the offering this year will go to them all of it, 100% of it. Um, for every $100 that's raised, a VBS volunteer, there may be some excluded for various reasons, but for the most part, you can pick any VBS, or the kids can, any, v, any VBS volunteer, and they go into Dunkin' Booth. So it's a different person for every 100 bucks that's raised. Um, uh, I look forward to getting wet. So give some money. Give some money. It's going to a good cause. Saturday, August the 12th, is the Back to School Prayer Walk. That's an associational thing. Uh, there will be more information about that coming. Sunday, August 13th, it will be VBS Family Day. That's the Sunday immediately following uh, the VBS. Uh, we'll have all kinds of inflatables and um, that kind of stuff out here for families to enjoy. And we're going to have all these kids back that came to VBS, and not just them, but their families. It's a wonderful opportunity to, to minister to people that we may have never met before, or maybe we have. Um, but it's a wonderful opportunity to uh, outreach to our community and minister to folks that we don't see every Sunday. Wednesday, August 16th, we're moving services from here to the Blue Ridge Camp Meeting. Uh, more information about that to come, about when to meet and all that stuff. Uh, Sunday, August 27th, in the morning service, there'll be a Gideon here speaking about their, uh, the work they do and their program. Uh, Saturday, September the 9th is Kids Day from 10.30 to 1 p.m. Uh, there's going to be a Dunkin' booth and slides and water slides and bouncy houses and pizza uh, and all that kind of stuff. It should be complete pandemonium and chaos. So, I don't know. You might just want to come by and watch that. That might be in more entertaining than anything on TV. Uh, Saturday, September 23rd, the Big Level Women's Group will host the third annual barbecue dinner and silent auction at 4 o'clock. All proceeds will go to towards shipping costs for the OCC shoe boxes. Uh, tickets will be on sale soon. Uh, we're accepting items for the auction now. Uh, please don't donate clothes. That just doesn't work. Um, thank you for your support. You know, we, we pack up all these shoe boxes, but sometimes we forget that it costs money to ship them somewhere. So if you get them packed and there ain't no money to ship them, they really ain't doing much good sitting in the warehouse. So come on and support that. Um, let's get money to ship these things. Uh, and we're evangelizing to the world through that, through that one thing. So... Uh, the renovation project, you can see it's ongoing. Uh, anyone that wishes to donate to the renovation project to offset the cost just needs to note that on their envelope or on their check. <coughs> the ministry of the month is, the Gide is Gideon's International. If you're donating to that, make sure to note that on your check or on your envelope. And Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Items for August is soap and washcloths. So I think that brings me to the end of my list. Uh, before we sing, we have a couple of special guests here with us. They'll be with us uh, through all of Vacation Bible School. So we're going to have them come up now, and um, then we'll get back to the regular service. Wow. Man, wow. Man look at these screens. Oh, you know I can do some gaming on these screens. Oh, man, Fortnite, Minecraft, maybe a little Madden. Oh, yes. Man, look at that big one in the back. Oh, this is awesome. Man, gaming is going to be so epic in this place this week. I know it's going to be awesome. I just know it's going to be awesome. It's going to be epic in this place. Oh, man. I got to figure out how to get my Xbox hooked up to that thing. I got to figure out how to get my Xbox hooked up. Mm. 
Hey, dude. Hey. I ain't seen you around here before. You here for VBS too? Oh, yeah, man. You you know it. You better believe it I'm here for VBS this week. My name's Rob. Hey. How you doing, bud? I'm doing good, man. Hey, I am Stan the Man. Stan the and Man. And I am all about some gaming. Hey, dude, look at these screens. We're going to be hooking up to these. It's going to be epic in here this week. Well, I'm no Albert Einstein. But I can tell you're all about some gaming. Yeah, um, absolutely. But what, about, but, but what about older classic games? You know, games that uh, stood the test of time. That, that's why they're classics. Classics? Uh, what is this, the History Channel? I, I didn't come here to get some lesson about classic games. I came here to dominate in some gaming. Huh. Well, I can uh, see you're pretty confident. Um, uh -huh. what, is, what do you say I introduce you to some older games this week? Uh, maybe some games that you don't play on a screen. Don't play them on a screen? What are you talking about? Really? You don't, dude, like, like real games, like good games, like Checkers and, and Candyland and Twister and Operation. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And, ch and Chess. That's the, yeah. Well, maybe the IQ is not up to Chess. But, uh, <laughs> So what do you say, Stan the Man? Are you up to the challenge? You know what? I never turn down a challenge. You're on. I'll see you and your classic board games here this week for VBS. Hey, prepare to lose, Roberto. Hmm. Hmm. I see about that. But uh, you seem a little uptight. Just take it easy this week. Get plenty of rest and come ready for VBS. Kids. Okay. Y'all ready for VBS this week? Yeah! Awesome. Yeah. See y'all then. See y'all Thursday. In your Baptist hymnal, page 63, I stand amazed what goes on here and my Savior too. Let's give him praise as we sing about Jesus. All over this room. I stand
Page 454 in the Baptist, 454 in the Baptist hymnal, down at the cross where Jesus died. Glory to his name. Give him glory. Down at the cross where my Savior people said.
pray for anybody here today this morning that might be lost, Lord. I pray that they would take the opportunity to allow you to apply that blood to their heart to come and accept you as their Savior, Lord. We pray for all the upcoming activities for the rest of this week. Thank you for all your goodness, grace, love, and mercy, and everything that happens and takes place. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Page 63. Read your word. Just over yonder. Just over
coisas sem mudar quase. We shake hands all over this place, make our visitors well.
all God's people say it. Amen. God's good. Amen. And I'm looking forward to that glad reunion day. And uh, praise the Lord, I got some loved ones I long to see over there. Um, but uh, the one that I long to see most of all is my blessed Savior. So thank you for that song today. Um, if you have your Bibles this morning, I invite you to turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, we're going to be in the third chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to read verses 3 through 9 together uh, this morning, dive into the thought that that I believe God would have for us for this time. I was telling my wife just last night as we were sitting in the living room, I said, today and Wednesday and this week is probably one of my favorite weeks of ministry um, that I have the privilege of doing throughout the year. I, I love getting together on VBS Decorating Sunday. Uh, with God's people and seeing the church be the church, coming together, having a volunteer meeting and then sitting there and everybody pitching in and decorating the church and just turning it into VBS and getting to have a fellowship meal together and laugh and smile and make memories together. It's one of my favorite times. I I just enjoy uh, sitting back and listening and watching as the church is the church. And I'll tell you, there's no sweeter time than on a Wednesday night before vacation Bible school than to gather together with God's people and to pray over the whole campus. I've seen God move in and do some miraculous, wonderful things with us just on a Wednesday night, just praying over the entire campus as we're preparing for vacation Bible school. And if you haven't realized it yet, I just want to remind you Your pastor loves Vacation Bible School. I am a huge supporter of Vacation Bible School. Our team has done a wonderful job uh, getting everything prepared and ready, and I am longing to see what the Lord is going to do this week. And I want to thank all of you that have signed up to be a part. We could not do it without you. And so with that thought in mind, I want to preach a sermon today entitled, Labor Together. Labor together. Let's look at our text today, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we'll begin reading in verse 3. If you found your place and you will and enable, would you stand in reverence to the reading of the Word of God? The Bible says in verse 3 of chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians, For ye are not, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come to your house today and to gather and to worship you because you alone are worthy to be worshipped. We sure are thankful uh, for this place that we get to call home. And God, I want to say thank you already for meeting with you people today. I can feel your presence in this place. God, we say thank you for the songs that have been sung, prayers that have been prayed, testimonies given. And God, we say thank you for your pure, holy, infallible word. As we look to this text today, I stand where my flesh fails me. Father, I cannot preach in and of myself. I don't have the ability, I don't have the intellect to do it. So God, I pray that you would preach. God, just hide me behind the cross and use me as a vessel. I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice would see all of you and none of me. And we'll give you all praise, honor, and glory for everything that's said and done. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and all God's people say it. Amen. Thank you so much for standing. You may be seated. Just by way of introduction and context this morning, uh, we know that the Apostle Paul here is writing to the church at Corinth. Now, when we look at the church at Corinth, there's one thing that I want to point out to you, um, and it'll help you today, uh, because the first thing I want to point out is that the church at Corinth was full of flawed people. 
it was full of flawed people. Can I tell you that big level Baptist church from the pulpit all the way to the back is full of flawed people. We come here as flawed people saying we don't have it all together, but we come and worship a perfect Savior. That's what we do when we come into this place. Now the church at Corinth, they were flawed people and they didn't have it all together all the time. Why, they made a lot of mistakes. And Paul would have to write to them not to brag on them, not to pat them on the back and tell them how good of a job you've been doing, but rather to let them know this is where you're making error, this is where things need to be corrected. And he would even say this in some of his writing, I'll correct more of this when I get there. He had to write to them concerning partaking of the Lord's Supper. Why they were not doing it correctly. And so he had to write to the church and say, "This is you don't go to the Lord's Supper to have a meal. If you're hungry, eat at home. <laughs> you're taking it in an unworthy manner. That's why many among you are sick and they sleep. That doesn't mean they're taking a nap. It means they're dead. They weren't doing it right. So he has to write to set things in order. Numerous times throughout Paul's letter to the church at Corinth, he will use this lingo, reminding them that their body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. They would forget and get out in the world and do worldly things, and he'd say, hey, if God saved you, he's taken up residence there in your heart, and he's there present in your life. Your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. Don't defile it. <laughs> I had to re remind them regarding that. It was carnal and it was fleshly. And they made mistakes. In verse 3, I, I want to see the result of carnality. Paul writes, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy, strife, and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? I notice Paul's verbiage here in this verse. For whereas there is among you. He does not say there could be or there might be. He says there is among you. Word has done gotten back to Paul. There has been validation given to Paul that these things that are going to be listed here in this verse are going to be found in the church at Corinth. He said these things are among you. Envying, strife and divisions. I came to remind you Problems in the church always result from a flesh issue. Problems in the church always arise from a flesh issue. God redeemed our soul, but we're still robed in flesh. So there are times in our lives when we don't think spiritually. We don't have a Christ-like mind. We're not wanting to get together in a Christ-like spirit with unity with fellow believers. Rather, we act like a two-year-old and we say, I want it my way. And if I don't get it my way, I'm going to throw a pity party and have a temper tantrum. And we can say, we're going to make everybody else's life miserable that comes around me. And what happens when we act in the flesh? We have envy, we have strife, and we have divisions. Not due to our spirituality, but due to our carnality that rears its ugly head even in the church. What are envies? Meaning this, you're upset about what somebody else has got and you desire to have it in your life. Well, why do they have that? Why is God blessing them like that? Why won't he bless me like that? Why don't I have what they have? Envy. What about strife? I looked up the definition. This is what it says. To be angry or bitter in disagreement. To be angry or bitter in disagreement. What about division? Simple layman's terms is this. It's a split. You're not one. You're multiples. You're saying, no, I'm going over here. and I'm going over there. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. Paul is laying it all out. He's not saying this is coming your way, Corinth. He is not saying it's on the horizon, Corinth. He's saying this is what's happening at the present time, at the present moment, inside your church. Can we all get a little bit of a smile on our face and say that Baptist churches know all about all that stuff? Baptist churches know all about all that stuff. They know about envy. 
They know about strife. And they know about division. Now, I've been in ministry for 10 years, and I'll tell you this, I've never heard a Baptist church member call it that. Never heard them call it that. But that's what God says it is. By the way, I still believe that all Scripture is inspired. So that means that God is telling Paul exactly what to write here in this letter. So therefore, God is the author, Paul is the writer, and God's laying it out, and God sees everything. So not only does Paul know, but even more than that, God knows. God knows what's going on on the inside of the church. Now we can point out different things as Paul has done. He's listed them out, but I'm glad we're going to get to a remedy because if you focus on the flesh and you're all about the carnal and you're all about yourself, it's going to be really, really hard to finish out this text today. But if we'll lay that stuff aside, we'll get some help and we'll see a remedy. The issues brought out in verse 4, the carnality, what, what, what in the world is going on? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? People in the church, they say, uh -uh, I'm with Paul. They said, others say, mm, I'm with Apollos. Splitting it right down the middle. They say, no, I'm for him and I'm for him. Causing strife, causing problems, causing division among the church. <laughs> They're picking sides. You ever heard that in the Baptist church? They're picking sides, trying to decide which one they're on, who they're going to support. Paul's going to go on to write this. The church is picking sides while the ministers are working together. The church is picking sides while the ones you're picking sides over, we're in it together. And we're working together. We are one. Let's look on and see what the Bible says, what this proper focus that we're to have. Verse 5, Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers? by whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. Paul says, who am I and who is Apollos? But we're just ministers. Layman's term, we're just servants. We're ones called by God to do what he's called us to do. Can I tell you this today, friend? I'm just here doing what God's called me to do. <laughs> if you're holding position in the church and you're serving the church and you're serving the Lord, I pray you're just doing what God has called you to do. Hey, just do what He's called you to do. Serve in whatever capacity that He's told you to serve. Do whatever He's given you the giftedness to do. Hey, I praise the Lord for all these musicians. I can't play the piano. I can't play a guitar. I can't do anything. Hey, I'll get up here and sing to make a joyful noise. I love to sing, but that's about it when it comes to me musically. That's about it. I'm glad God's still gifting people to play instruments. Can I, can I let you know a little bit about me? I'm not geared to teach Sunday school. When I come here on a Sunday morning, I'm in fourth gear, overdrive, wide open, ready to go. And see, when you go to Sunday school and you do this, you'll scare everybody out of there. So when they ask me to fill in and teach Sunday school, I got to grab the gear shift and knock her down to granny gear first. And I got to throttle down. Then I get out of the youth class and I got to get back in my office and get my music on, get back in my text. And man, I got to grab that gear shifter and put her back in overdrive, four wheel drive, and fourth gear. I'm just built that way. But I sure am thankful, Brother Randy, there's people that God's gifted them to teach the Word of God while He calls me to preach it. I'm thankful for that. I preach and I teach, I'll do it all. But there are some people, they weren't called to preach, they were called to teach. And they do a great job. What about these people that work with kids and teenagers? Yeah, y'all looking at each other saying, mm -mm, I'm glad that ain't me. I'm glad it ain't me. But God looked down and he gave certain people gifts. Man, it seems like he gave some an extra dose of long suffering to deal with children and to deal with teenagers. Aren't you thankful for those? You mamas and daddies that have kids and teenagers, you ought to be shaking your head that you're thankful for people that God's given them the heart the desire and the gift to pour into your child or teenager to aid you in the work of molding them and helping disciple them. Hey, the proper focus, we're all just servants, 
Nobody's more important than the next one. Do you hear me today? This is not Pastor Sean's church. This is not the deacon's church. We are all in this together. Together. Paul says, hey, I'm going to use some farming terms. We're out in farm country. We ought to know these. He said in verse 6, I planted. We know about planting. Just get you a bag and throw out some seed. Throw out some seed, right? No. Uh Uh-uh. No. Pinpoint. Pinpoint where it's supposed to go. I know this much. A green thumb, I have not. But I do know this much. There are certain things you got to have in order for a crop to grow. You got to have the sun, and you got to have some water <laughs> in order for the crop to grow. By the way, the S O N sun it shines all the time. <laughs> Paul says, "Hey, I planted. Apollos had come along. He'd watered, <laughs> but, but God gave the increase." <laughs> It would do us all good at Big Level Baptist Church this morning to just sit back and take a good look at our lives and who we are and know our roles this morning. Know our roles. We are nothing but a bunch of planters and waters. That's all we are today. We're going to plant. We're going to water. Can I ask you this? How well have you been planting? How well have you been watering? Can I encourage you with this? This week, you have an amazing, an amazing opportunity to do some planting and some watering. Right now, we got close to 60 kids that are signed up to come to Vacation Bible School. Somebody say amen. All right? Listen, that's 60 souls. You get to plant, you get to water for three days. For three days. And friend, I'm here to tell you, if you go out into the field and you halfway do something, anybody ever heard that lingo before? Doing it halfway, halfway do something, you'll get halfway results. Can I encourage you as your pastor this week? Don't you halfway do nothing this week. Do it 100% above and beyond what you think you could ever do. I'm saying plant like you never planted before. I'm saying water like you never watered before. We're all in this together from the ones teaching Bible to the ones teaching missions to the ones downstairs feeding these youngins Hey, to the people working registration to the people doing music to the people who are outside on security doing audiovisual. Everybody's together on this thing. Let's all get together and plant water son this week. What an awesome opportunity. (laughs) Every role is important. Every role is important. Same way in the church. Let's look at vacation Bible school. Everybody. Everybody's important. Because I'm here to tell you, friend, if one doesn't do their job, it's going to fall on somebody else to do it. We're all important. When it comes to God's kingdom, there are no big and small jobs. (laughs) There are just jobs (laughs) for us to do. By the way, you ain't doing it for me. You're doing it for Him. That's what we're all doing it for. Doing it for Him. And we need to know our roles and know what we can do so that God, don't miss this, don't miss this. Tune in right here. If you're taking notes, write this down. We need to do what we're called to do. Listen to this. So that God can do what only He can do. We need to do what we're called to do so that God can do what only He can do. I came to remind you, I can plant, I can water, but Preacher Sean can't save nobody. I couldn't even save myself. I can't save anybody. So we might as well just sit there and say, you know what? 
I can't do it all, but I can do what he's called me to do. So I'm just going to do what he's called me to do this week, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability as he's given me my talents and my gifts to do so, and I can't wait to see him do what he's going to do. But God gave the increase. Paul would say it twice in this text in verses 5 and 7. But God giveth the increase. God's work is to be done. Only He can do it. Listen to me. And He's faithful to do it. See, we're not always faithful to water and plant. We slack off. He's always been faithful. When we're not faithful, He's always faithful. I came to remind somebody, He's still seeking and saving that which was lost. He's still doing it. There's no sinner that's too lost to get saved. <laughs> he can save anybody, anywhere, at any time. <laughs> he's faithful to do so. But I know this. God don't like to move around envy, strife, and division. I've been in those churches before. Before I was a senior pastor, I would get calls from churches that were struggling. Didn't have a pastor. They done run that one off. They called me to come in there and preach. Cold as the Arctic. I mean, it seemed like they had cobwebs in their baptism. People wouldn't even sit together. I was in one one time. I ain't going to say the name of the church. There was a younger gentleman that went up to the older folks that were sitting. They were sitting in the amen corner like over there. He went up to him and he said, Hey, we got a whole sanctuary. You want to come sit with us? And people just cross their arms and snarl. Mm -hmm. I ain't sitting with you. I'm sitting there saying, This is going to be fun to preach to today. <laughs> by the way, I preach to them just like I preach to you. Because by the way, I preach for an audience of one. <laughs> That's all I preach to I preached to him. I let it land wherever it lands. <laughs> but I've been in them places. And I'll say what them old preachers used to say. God ain't within a hundred miles of that church. Do you love getting the Holy Ghost chill bumps from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet? Do you love seeing lives changed forever? Do you love seeing your baptistry filled up and getting to go to the river? Do you love hearing people stand up and testify about how good God's been to them and all that He's done in their life? I'm here to tell you, friend, if you like that and that's what you want to be a part of, look on with me. Look on. For we are laborers together. Paul in verse 8 is going to say, we're nothing. <laughs> I'm nothing, but God's everything. And he says, we're going to labor together. But we're not just laboring me and Apollos. Who else is in that, in that group? With God. I've been in this long enough, friend. I'm here to tell you, if you try to do it on your own, you try to do it in your own ability, you try to do it in your own intellect, you're not going to get the job done. You'll fall flat on your face. It may work for a little while. Okay? I'm not saying you're bad. I'm saying you, you might be pretty good. But I'm telling you, you ain't nothing compared to him. There ain't nothing like working in Him. Nothing like laboring together with Him. There is nothing like it <laughs> where I long to be. Laboring with Him. <laughs> with God. Ye are God's husbands. He says, we're one. I don't know about you, but that kind of gives me the thought of a wedding, doesn't it, Hugh? September the 29th, 2012, I stood before God and our families, and I told that beautiful lady over there, it'd be till death do us part. And that day, we became one. <laughs> Going to celebrate 11 years this year. What a beautiful picture of the bride and the groom coming together as one. Can I get spiritual with you for just a second? The church... The church, the capital C church, is labeled as the bride of Christ. Well, if we're the bride of Christ, that means he's the groom. <laughs> One day he's coming back for his bride. One. One. The 
day that God saved your soul, <laughs> He put you in the bride. <laughs> what a blessing. What a picture of that is. One. Don't fuss and fight and strife and envy. Be one. Be one together. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's closing today, I want to remind you, everything still belongs to Him. It's all still His. Big Level Baptist Church is His. My life is His. Your life is His. Vacation Bible School is no different. It's all His. It's all His. So I just want to encourage you today. Let's labor together. Labor together. Ten years of ministry, I've seen enough fights. I've seen enough squabbles. And I know this much. I know this much. That Satan hates vacation Bible school. I can tell you that. I've been through some storms and trials. And I've seen it. Can I encourage you with this? Don't let the devil use you to cause envy, strife, and division this week. I wouldn't come here and serve. I wouldn't come to this place tonight at 3 o'clock without being prayed up. And I mean having my armor on from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. And no, God, I'm going in. We're going into battle, but we're going for you. And God, I want everything done this week to be done for you. Not for my glory, not for my reputation, not for my accolades. I want it all done for you. I don't know about you, but I'm praying for God to move in a mighty way this week. But I also came to remind you, as I invite the musicians to come to the piano and the organ to play for us, you're not too good. Don't sit there in the pew this morning and say, well, preacher, that was a fine message. But it won't happen to me. It won't happen to me. I'm good. I've seen some of the greatest, godliest people. I've seen them do marvelous work for the kingdom of God. Serve Him well. In a southern term, get too big for their britches. And all of a sudden, they find themselves in the middle of a mess that they never thought they'd wind up in. They found themselves doing things they said, they, oh, I'll never do that. I'd never do that. Friend, I'm here to tell you, one-on-one, -on -one, you're no match for that devil. One-on-one, -on -one, you're no match for that devil. But we are more than conquerors through Christ. <laughs> Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. VBS worker, there's like 60 of you that signed up. Some of them ain't here today. I would encourage you today. I'd come down here today and say, God, I'm going to labor together this week. I don't know who I'm serving with. I don't know where I'm going to be. But God, I just want to labor together. That's what I want to do. I want to labor together. And I want to see you do mighty and powerful. I don't know about you, but I've got, I've got three kids. They got, they got it up here. It just hadn't made its way down to here yet. And it doesn't matter if I'm preaching. It doesn't matter if Dr. Joe Walker's preaching. <laughs> Barry Spears, Cody Thorne, Steve Dagenhart, C.T. Townsend, on down the line. doesn't matter. doesn't matter who's preaching. I just pray for the Holy Ghost to come by their way. Save their soul. Holy Ghost told me in my study, what if it was this week for your kids? <laughs> Grandma, Grandpa, what if it was this week for your grandkids? Mom, Daddy, what if it was this week for your kids to give their life to Jesus? You want anything to hinder that? <laughs> or you want the Holy Ghost to work and be able to manifest himself in their life? <laughs> that's what I want. I pray that's what you want. Let's labor together this week. Every head bowed, every eye closed. The altar's open. Oh, would you come and say, God, help me to labor together. God, help me to be a part. God, help me to do it right. People's moving already.
Let's do it, church. Let's do it for the glory of God. It's not about anybody else. It's all about Him today. All about Him. It'll always be all about Him. Always. All God's people say it. Well, let's make it about the Lord this week. We've got a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to do some planting and some watering. And uh, so I encourage you all, if you signed up to volunteer at Vacation Bible School, please be here tonight at 3 o'clock. We're going to meet here in the sanctuary. They'll go over things with Vacation Bible School and uh, have time for you to ask questions. And they'll answer those uh, the best of their ability. And then we're going to get to decorating. Uh, following that, I believe we've got more decorations than we've ever had before. And so we're going to have a wonderful time of fellowship tonight, getting things decorated and turning this place into twists and turns and have a 
wonderful week together. A meal will be provided tonight. There will be a taco bar downstairs to feed you, so you come and be a part of that. And uh, that will get us ready for Wednesday. Uh, we'll come together at 7 o'clock. We'll pray over the entire grounds. And then that will get us ready for Thursday, the first night of vacation for Bible school. I want to encourage you, folks, if you've got families and children and teenagers that you know, and, hey, they may not have a relationship with Jesus or have a church home, invite them to come and be a part of vacation Bible school. We've got room for them, amen, and uh, we'll have a wonderful, wonderful time together, and I'm looking forward to seeing what all God does this week. All hearts and minds to today. Brother Randy McGuinn, you close us in prayer, brother.